I'm Chris Morley. I'm a PhD student here in Nottingham uh, and my area of research is quantum mechanics but it's not crazy quantum stuff. It's kind of more designing like apparatus and things for experiments so that we can make quantum stuff happen easier, I suppose. Uh, probably a rock star. Like, I blame Queen. We had a Queen video uh, when I was a kid and I used to uh, watch that non-stop on War Out. Um, and then I just settled for having the hair. Um, but then, like, so there was kind of that, but also kind of like, I was quite into um, technology and stuff as a kid. Um, so I think for a while I wanted to be an astronaut as well, because who doesn't want to go into space? I entirely blame my dad, mostly, because uh, like that, that and my, uh, my A-level uh, kind of physics teachers, because especially when I was younger, like my dad is an engineer at Rolls-Royce, so he was all kind of quite interested in science and technology and things. He used to take me to museums and stuff. Um, like we went to Jodrell Bank Observatory and stuff when I was a kid, which was really cool. And then when I got to A-level, my entire thing was that I was just gonna go and do um, like engineering at Rolls-Royce. Uh, and so I took physics entirely just to do that. Um, and didn't particularly like it at GCSE. And then when I was doing it at A-level, I had two fantastic physics teachers who would just like impart so much like interesting stuff into the lectures and things. Um, and as a result, I basically went, screw it, this engineering malarkey. The stuff that I want to do is like all the crazy quantum physics and like particles and stuff. And so I kind of, at the time I think, like I kind of stumbled into doing physics at the last minute because I was like, I'm going to do engineering, and then went, actually no, this you know, physics stuff is loads better. So um, I work predominantly in uh, quantum mechanics, namely in a field called Bose-Einstein condensation, uh, which is essentially where you take a very dilute gas of alkali atoms and you fire laser beams at them, um, and that in a kind of odd way, cools them down, which is not something you expect from laser beams. You usually expect them to, you know, blow up Death Stars and things like that. Um, but it cools them down, and then you can use various other methods to get them to, like, really low temperatures. In fact, it's the lowest temperature in the universe that we know of. It occurs at, like, nano-Kelvin above absolute zero, and I think the temperature of space is something like 2.7 Kelvin, so it's colder than space. One of the reasons why I like it is that it's, while I work in kind of the theory department, it's quite nice because it's not just like, not that all theory is pointless, but it's not like just pointless theory. So like you can't negate the fact that, you know, if you put too much current through these coils or whatever, you're gonna melt the coils, and, you know, like things like that. Like you have to take into account all the real world stuff that, you know, you might usually just be like, yeah, we don't worry about that. I'd say probably my, either the fourth year um, or the, my first year of PhD, because the fourth year in Nottingham is quite different. There's a lot of kind of individual, like, uh, there's a lot of projects and stuff as opposed to kind of exams. And so having to basically go out and like do stuff for myself as opposed to just being like, I know the answer to this, just write it down on a piece of paper. Mm -hmm. That was kind of a challenge, but also quite enjoyable. Like it was a, you know, a pain at times, but then when you got to the end of it, it was like, oh, you know, I'm really glad I did that and that came out well. And then kind of my first year of PhD, um, at least it gives a good like six months of it was taken up with me trying to get this piece of code to work. And that, that was, yeah. That was not fun. Six months of looking at the same problem, I think, will drive everyone, anyone, insane. I don't know really. I guess, like, be more proactive in figuring out kind of what you want to do, which is a really, like, bizarre way of, like, putting it. But um, when I was first, like, applying to A-levels and stuff, 
I kind of just went with the idea of, oh, I'm just going to go to, you know, like Rolls Royce because it was kind of the easy option. And then in many ways, I think I was quite lucky in that I did physics and kind of ended up like falling into physics and finding it really enjoyable. But I think like a hell of a lot of, you know, problems could have been solved if I'd have been like, okay, what do I like actually enjoy doing and stuff like that. So yeah, that and don't let like setbacks kind of, you know, get you down. Because especially my first time around in A-levels, I like screwed up my maths A-level um, and had to go and like reset it. And I think that really helped because it was like, okay, I've screwed this up. I still want to go do physics. So I'm just going to have to go back and redo it and make sure that I actually do it properly this time. So, yeah. At the minute, I don't know. Um, honestly, uh, this is kind of another one of those things where it's like I, I'm rubbish at planning for the future. Um, I'd kind of like to stay in academia, maybe, but also I wouldn't mind just doing something entirely different. I would say uh, go for it. Um, Nottingham is a great place to study. Um, it's a really nice city. It's like all of the academics are, you know, pretty nice. And just like university in general, like it's not something like I think you'll end up regretting to be honest.